Photon and I had a great time at Maker Fair in North Carolina, but before we go to that footage, let's wrap up the build. Welcome to Hack a Week. <laughs> So the general idea with this ring is that it floats on four springs, one, two, three, four, and uh, that keeps it in a neutral position away from the edges. It just kind of floats there, and then it gets bumped from all kinds of directions and makes contact with some foil that I'll put around here, just like what's on the torso. This will be the ground plane. This will be four quadrants of foil and uh, be front back, left and right, bump sensors. I'll tighten those up in a minute. Oh, that's a beautiful thing, look at that. Now I'll mount my springs off from these pieces of wood. It looks like I need to move the motherboard for the uh, Roomba, the one with the H-bridges on it, back here somewhere. It's not too hard to do. I've got this stuff sprayed down with spray adhesive just like I did on the, the other pieces. Let's get these babies put on here. I put a little bit of spray adhesive on the wood as well. Hopefully it's enough to stick. I might just run a staple into it in a few places as well. And make sure the screw doesn't poke through the bottom because that needs to slide unrestricted on the uh, on the lower platform. Now let's mount those springs. And screw in the hole. Should be far enough. Spin around to the other side. And we'll see just how much tension we get here side to side. It should center itself, that's what I'm shooting for. Well, that idea was a total fail. It's totally not working. This is pretty heavy stuff. I need some pretty heavy duty springs, I think. Uh, I mean, it's a sound idea. It just needs to have heavier springs so that when it does bump into it, it'll come back. Hmm. Well, there is an alternative, actually. If I came up with something that went around the outside that was lighter weight, that might do the trick. I think I'm gonna call it quits for the night. It's getting pretty late and brainstorm on this. I gotta sleep on it. I'll come up with something. I know I will. I always do. Wait a minute. I told you I'd come up with an idea. See these? These are momentary contact switches. I've got a crap load of these things. And uh, they're pretty cool little switches. They're about a half inch in diameter, just a momentary contact switch. I got these from a guy a few years ago with a bunch of other electronic stuff for 75 bucks for the whole box. A couple hundred bucks worth of stuff. It was pretty cool. I think I have enough of these to go all the way around the perimeter. Just space them apart about, oh, maybe two inches, something like that. And uh, that's, gonna, that's gonna bump into something and, and it'll trigger the switch. That's, um, that's gonna work, I think. And I might even be able to still use the ring if I do it right. Uh, hmm. Anyway, I think I'm gonna experiment with that. Hot glue, you know, just hot glue them. That'll work. All right, the problem may be solved. Hot glue is your friend. Feeling pretty good about this. Not to mention, it looks pretty badass. <laughs> 48 switches later, and uh, they are connected up. There they are, all 48 of the switches. And they're all connected with some pre-tinned copper wire that I picked up at Radio Slack. They've got, uh, you've got questions, they've got cell phones. Anyway, 
and a few microcontrollers. I don't know, I should give them a break. Radio Shack really helped me get started in electronics way back in the 1970s, a million years ago. So uh, everything's pretty much done on this base now. I think I'm gonna maybe let this fly just like it is. These should work pretty well as bump sensors. I might do something around here if I've got time, like a little band to cover more area for bumpage. Uh, I've got everything hot glued and this is the cable that runs to the sensors all around the side. They're in four quadrants. So I've got a front quadrant, left, right, back, all that stuff. So that's done. Now on the torso, the mate to that plug that you just saw is right here and it goes up to each one of these quadrants and connects up. Right there is an example of how I connected it. It's just a staple going into the uh, cardboard tube and the bare wire is under the staple and then a little bit of hot glue to help it out. And on the back side, inside, I bent the staple over, put a little more hot glue on it. And then it's all hot glued underneath here so that it can't go anywhere. So I can still remove this base easily to swap out the battery. Some people mentioned uh, last week, why didn't I just put a charge port? Well, that would entail parking the thing for a while and letting it charge, and I don't want to do that. I want to let it run around the floor at Maker Faire and interact with people as much as possible. So the torso will remain removable, and uh, I'll just swap batteries, and it can get back out there and run around. Now let's take a look at the voltage regulator circuits that I built. So earlier this evening on Ustream, I was uh, working on these. This is um, two LM317Ts on a single board, and they have uh, a common ground between them, but there's two separate outputs on uh, these two leads right here. And this is the 12 volt in and out right here. I was shooting for 5.2 volts according to the calculations and it came out at 5.3 volts, which is pretty cool. So that all works, I tested it out. It will get mounted up over here on the uh, top somewhere, like right about there. I'll connect it up to my 12 volt supply that I have here. And then I'll run the wires from the output up to the top here. Tomorrow I am going to put the hardware here to mount the cameras and then what I'll do is just cut the cord that goes to the cameras and uh, connect it to some of these guys some electrical connectors and uh, they're insulated and that way later I can still keep my wall warts and my uh, power supplies to charge up my JVC and my Canon camcorders but for Maker Fair, I'll be able to plug them in to those two power supplies with these guys. So I'll just cut the cord to the wall wart, connect it to the camera, and then connect it up to the power supply. Now I probably need to work out a heat sink to put on here because I'm going to pull about an amp uh, on each one. And they're going to get pretty warm, so that shouldn't be too hard. Just a, a little piece of aluminum on there with a, a nut and bolt going through it. A little bit of heat sink material and we're good to go. Okay back at it and I've got the uh, LM317 dual regulator going here. I put a little heat sink on there just a couple pieces of angle aluminum on each one of those LM317 T's. Over here I have two USB ports that basically do nothing but supply 5 volts and they do that from the 12 volt input that I will connect right here soon. But I need to make one more LM317T for the GoPro. The GoPro runs on 3.7 volts. So I've already selected out the resistors I need for that. And I've got the chip right there. I've got a perf board there and I need to make one more. And I will mount that right here. So these guys uh, started out life as a couple of those little cigarette lighter plug-in adapters. And uh, they're pretty cool. They have a little toroidal choke on them as well. So they should provide power just fine for the two smartphones. And again, these leads here will go to the two camcorders. I've adapted 
the power supply charging leads from the wall warts to these guys. And I uh, have some connectors here. I also took the uh, wall wart, where is it? Follow me across the room here for a minute. And uh, on the wall wart, I put the same connectors so I can still use them after I'm done with this hack to charge up the, uh, the batteries. So now I've got some more stuff to put together. Wow, this thing is really going into overtime here. But I will get it done and have it at Maker Faire in time. Okay, we got progress happening. Here's the GoPro voltage regulator, 3.2 volts. There's my two 5 volt power supplies. Here's the uh, other two voltage regulators that output 5.2 volts each. All that stuff is on board now with wires. I've got a really cool stretchy cable for the GoPro because it's going to go way up on the top of a boom. Now it's down to just the hardware on the top here to mount the cameras. Got to get going on that. Wow, look at that. Photon is up. It's not moving right now. I've got everything disabled except for the camera power. So there it is. There's all the cameras on board. We're there, we're there, we're there, and we're there. This camera right here is the uh, Canon that I use for the video. This is a uh, high definition. I'm shooting on the Canon XS10 IS right now. Uh, this one is the JVC, the one I used for well over a year with Hack a Week. Lots of videos got shot on that one. This will be shooting upside down, but when I edit the video, I can just flip it over. This will be shooting the time lapse stuff. That one's going to capture high definition. That's the Motorola Droid um, Razer HD. That's the one that will be streaming Wi Fi to Ustream. And this one here will be streaming. Oh no, wait a minute, not Wi Fi. This one will be streaming via my uh, Verizon network to Ustream. And then this one will be Wi Fi to uh, a display back at my booth and whoever happens to tune into the Wi Fi signal. Um, I'll get the web address in here before the end of the, uh, no, you know, in fact, I'll put it in the video description. I'll put the uh, link to the Ustream that'll be coming off this one, and I will put the IP address here for anyone that's within range. You just open a browser if you have Wi-Fi in your phone, most people do, and you can uh, watch that if you're at Maker Faire. And then way up there on the top on the mast is the GoPro. And that will be uh, kind of recording the overall scene in a nice wide angle. So there we go. Wow, what a lot of work. This has been quite an endeavor and uh, took a lot, lot longer than I ever thought it would. Things are always like that though. And I kind of forgot about you know all the circuitry I had to build here. I had to make three voltage regulator circuits and then I had to hack up a couple of USB power supplies, all off in 12 volts. And I've got two Arduinos to make things easier. One for the Emic 2 right there. There's the uh, Emic 2 text-to-speech module. There's the LM386 amplifier. And over here is the Arduino that will run the motors down at the bottom. And there's the 48 switches. And they all work okay. I tested them out earlier. Oh, and here's a nice little uh, added touch so I can keep track of my voltage. It's an old Radio Shack Micronta analog voltmeter and you can see right there we're uh, at about what 10 volts right now something like that i'm not sure just how many amps i'm drawing i really would like to get an amp meter on here before i take this to maker fair and mount that up somewhere down there it sure would be handy to know how many amps i'm drawing because i've got two 10 amp hour motorcycle batteries and if i know how many amps well then i can do some calculations and get a rough idea of how long my battery will last and of course I would have to do those calculations uh, with the motor running and everything. So, anywho, right now it's time to, to rest. I need to put myself into a sleep cycle because I have really been busy, busy, busy with Photon. And uh, I'm burnt. Do I look burnt? <laughs> okay, well, take a look at my workbench. That'll give you an idea. It's... Uh, totally chaos in here right now so anyway um, off to bed for tonight tomorrow um, we'll wrap up this video I'm gonna do a little bit more stuff here 
on the hardware. I think I'll drill some holes in the top here and run all of the wires up through that hole to just make things look a little nicer. And then maybe even take some window screen and wrap it around here. It'll take just a few minutes to do that. Yeah, just a few minutes, sure. Famous last words. Okay, let's wrap it up and uh, we'll be back later. And then way up there on the top on the mast is the GoPro. And that will be uh, kind of recording the overall scene in a nice wide angle. So there we go. Wow, what a lot of work. This has been quite an endeavor and uh, took a lot, lot longer than I ever thought it would. Things are always like that though. And I kind of forgot about, you know, all the circuitry I had to build here. I had to make three voltage regulator circuits and then I had to hack up a couple of USB power supplies, all off from 12 volts. And I've got two Arduinos to make things easier. One for the Emic 2 right there. There's the uh, Emic 2 text-to-speech module. There's the LM386 amplifier. And over here is the Arduino that will run the motors down at the bottom. And there's the 48 switches. And they all work okay. I tested them out earlier. Oh, right now it's time to, to rest. I need to put myself into a sleep cycle because I have really been busy, busy, busy with Photon and uh, I'm burnt. Do I look burnt? <laughs> okay, well, take a look at my workbench. That'll give you an idea. It's uh, totally chaos in here right now. So anyway, um, off to bed for tonight. Tomorrow, um, we'll wrap up this video. I'm gonna do a little bit more stuff here on the hardware. I think I'll drill some holes in the top here and run all of the wires up through that hole to just make things look a little nicer. And then maybe even take some window screen and wrap it around here. It'll take just a few minutes to do that. Yeah, just a few minutes, sure. Famous last words. Okay, let's wrap it up and uh, we'll be back later. Smile, you're on candid camera. Okay, not really, but you are being broadcast live on the internet. Hello, I am Photon. I am a video and photo gathering robot. I am equipped with five cameras recording Maker Faire, North Carolina. consist of 48 switches. My body is hacked together from hardware store items and various pieces of electronics. My creator, Dino C. Gopis, aka Maker Dino, spent over 100 hours making me. Thanks, Maker Dino. I enjoy being here. Sweet upon 
on the seat of my bicycle built for two. So that about wraps it up. Next stop will be Maker Fair, New York City. So till next time. Photon and I had a great time at Maker Fair North Mayor. Faker Mayor. <laughs> <laughs>